Welcome, Junkies. It has been a while since we've talked with you guys. Uh, we are excited to start this podcast today. Lance had a good idea to share some of his experiences from this summer trying to film his own hunts, and we kind of thought that it would be good to give some of those tips out to everyone to kind of go over and learn with us and learn with our mistakes that we've made over this summer. Um, it's, it's definitely something that we're not experts at. We're still in the infancy, so to speak, of recording our own hunts, but it's always something that in, in the back of your mind that you want to have for either posterity or just to go back and look on the hunt and experience it again. I, I think anybody out there really enjoys seeing themselves and what went through. So Lance has a lot of good tips tricks and stuff that he's learned this summer and we want to go over that today so yeah and i'm not sure i want to film anymore <laughs> <laughs> based on this year's experience oh, it's a challenge i mean i i respect individuals that do their own self-guided and self-filmed hunts it's yeah. it's impressive i mean everybody knows the the people out there that do that and once you start doing it on your own, I mean, you realize real quick, man, this is, this is, hard. this isn't easy. Yet. And I've tried filming hunts in the past, but this was the first time with a nice, uh, DSLR camera, you know, kind of the whole setup. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, it was a challenge with a lot of things I learned that, Hey, let's, sh let's share it with everyone. And maybe someone will benefit from some of these things. Yeah. Some of, meaning 22 to be precise. 22 precise <laughs> points of information <laughs> that we're going to go through. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. So I want to hear, uh, you were sharing with me before this about an experience you had over the archery range. I want to hear about it. <laughs> so my, my son and I, we've signed up. They've got a 3D archery league that runs every Thursday night for six weeks. And I think this was our fourth week shooting. And. We had gone through, oh, there's, they set up 13 different shooting scenarios each lane has that you shoot from. And we'd gone through almost all of them. I think we had three left. And I was pulling back on my bow at the red stag at 61 yards. And all of a sudden, my, my, my release went off and I punched myself in the face. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever done that. And I thought, oh, crap, did I just happen to hit the trigger? And I didn't even think, you know, that my release might have failed because, you know, I open it back up and I hook it back on the D-loop and it seemed fine and put another arrow on and draw back and bam, <laughs> punch myself <laughs> twice in the same exact spot. You know, my lips starting to swell up. I'm like, are you kidding me? Did anyone else see this? Jared, my son. <laughs> and he's like, he's kind of not trying to not to laugh. But so I, I wish over. I would have been there because I would have. Oh, man. I would have been busted. Nobody else. I don't think anybody else saw it. But I go over and I ask Kyle Douglas because he was in his shop that night. And I was like, hey, do you got a spare release that I can use? And he's like, yeah. So then I go back out and my bow makes this funky noise and I'm like, I don't know if I want to shoot this right now. I, maybe with the something with the dr slight dry fire that happened. So I just call it quits for the last <laughs> three, three uh, shots. So basically the jaws failed. Yes. And Kyle set me up with a new release and I'm excited to use it. So... <laughs> I bet that next time you pulled back, you were oh, I was, hesitant. I, yeah. I, I looked at his that he was going to let me borrow, and I draw back. And I'm like, is this thing going to fail too? Is it just me now that I'm freaking out? So I was just like, I'm done for tonight. 
draw back, make sure your head's a little ways off. Well, it's so hard not to. I mean, you have your drawing sequence that you do, and yeah. so it's just it hit my lip in the exact same spot twice. <laughs> it does look a little swollen. <laughs> Punching myself. Oh, yeah, it was fun. Learn from your lessons, right? You know, figure it out. That's one good. I've never day. had one fell, so knock on wood. Oh, man. It makes me realize, too, that when I was driving home, I was like, man, if that would have failed on me on a hunt, yeah, I don't have a spare release. Yeah. So maybe I just need to get a cheap one that I can just throw in the pack or whatever if, in case something happens. Yeah, so I replaced mine, and I, I kept the old one just in case, yeah. just for that scenario. Well, and I lose stuff all the time, too, so. Well, that's just a given. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's why we have spare bows, too, yeah, right? Just right. in case something happens to your bow. Sure. <laughs> Well, should we talk about this? Yeah, let's get into it. Well, so this summer, um, when I drew out on the limited entry elk hunt, I decided I was going to fill my hunt. So I went out and purchased a Sony Alpha A6600 um, camera. And it's a digital SLR camera. Really nice camera. A lot of the uh, hunters out there are using this one or a similar model, A6400, yeah. A6500, et cetera. And then I also bought the Sony uh, G-Series um, 18 to 105 millimeter uh, lens, and it's got the power zoom, um, really nice for videoing because mm-hmm. um, it's really smooth, it's quiet, and it's also got the optical uh, image stabilization. So that was kind of the general setup. I also bought a microphone. I bought some other things that we'll talk about as well. So that was my setup. That's what I'd purchased, and that's what I went with. And um, like I'd mentioned earlier, it was the first time using this kind of a setup. In the past, I've had my camera mounted yeah. to my bow or your cell phone. Or, yeah, or something, right? Um, and and this this was just something new that I thought I'd try. And so I thought it'd be good to share with the listeners all the things that I had learned, um, learn from my mistakes so you don't have to make them um, yourself. But one of the things that I just, I mean, right off the bat, I mean, it's difficult. Yeah. That was the first thing that I learned, that it's difficult, and then that filming really is a distraction from the hunt. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's hard to try to uh, video at the same time you're trying to hunt an animal. And this is a... a, a uh, you know, I'm filming myself. I don't mm-hmm. have a, a cameraman with me. So take it, um, everything I say based on that idea. But, you know, I messed up uh, opportunity after opportunity trying to, you know, get get, get it filmed, whatever yeah. I was doing. Um, I think one of the ones that obviously bothers me the most is I was actually set up in a blind. Um, I had built kind of a, a, a tree, twig, uh, branch blind. Natural. Yeah, natural blind. And I had my camera set up looking over a wallow there was a big wallow it was just beautiful the elk were using it a lot and i'd called in a bull and he's coming in the direction of that wallow and in my mind uh, and i think hunters we do this a lot we've talked about this a lot that you just kind of visualize how it's going to play out yeah and that's how i thought it was going to play out i've got my camera on a tripod i'm videoing directly over the wallow and i'm envisioning this elk coming in Straight to that in. wallow, right? And I'm going to get this all, business. yeah, I'm going to get all this on video. It's just going to be perfect. Well, the elk apparently f- didn't know about the script. So <laughs> he decided instead of going to the wallow, you know, he went behind me. Nice seven by six bull. Long story short, um, I missed him. I ended up hitting a branch when I, he was 30 yards broadside. I had stopped him. I shot, I hit a branch. But the reason I kind of bring this up is that in my mind, I had it all played out because I was videoing that it was going to happen this exact way. Yeah. I think if I wouldn't have had the camera with me, I would have pl- played out more scenarios, more options, thought about more options, rather mm-hmm. than staying in the blind, waiting for him to come right to the wallow and get on camera. Yeah. I think I would have probably gotten out of the blind, um, made sure I had plenty of shooting lanes, Um, but you know, I was kind of stuck in that mindset, you know, with, with the camera wanting to get on film. And so unfortunately didn't play out what I've gotten the bull. If I wasn't trying to film, who knows? Yeah. You don't know. It's just one of those things that I was. Of course you would have. Yeah. It's it's (laughs) just a given. (laughs) So anyways, it's going to happen. I mean, it's, it's a distraction. It's difficult. Um, but it's fun. I mean, it's definitely worth doing. Um, but that's just one of the things I, uh, I wanted to point out. Um, Another thing, too, is just making sure you always have your camera on you. And I know that sounds kind of obvious, um, but there were multiple times when I set my camera down, like the, the camera was in the backpack rather mm-hmm. than actually on me. Um, 
And there was one instance where instead of taking the time to put the camera um, on my quick release, on my, sh on my strap, on my back backpack strap, um, I just left it in the backpack. And I just went after this bull. He started bugling. I went after him. And trying to, I guess I want to be stealthy and be able to move quickly, I took my backpack off. I set it down on the ground. And I went after the bull. So yeah. obviously there's my camera in my backpack. And I'm going after this bull. And unfortunately... It got to where I actually had him at about 40 yards, and I, I cow called behind me, and he came. And he came at 20 yards from me, and he just started to rip into this tree, just raking it, tearing yeah. it apart. And it was kind of more of a tree shrub type thing. Um, but there I am with no camera, you know. Yeah. And because he was a smaller bull, wasn't he? A smaller bull, five point bull. And at that point I decided I wasn't going to shoot him. I'm like, Oh, I want to get this on video. And then, yeah. of course I did have my cell phone on me. Yeah. But here's a, you know, I bungled this. I always put my cell phone in the back pocket of, of my bino case. I'd put it in my pocket, in my zippered pocket. Oh. So here I'm looking for it and the bull's raking the tree and I can't find it there. And I realize, Oh, it's my pocket. By the time I Zzz. get it out. Yeah. <laughs> he, he stops raking the tree and then he walks right towards me, and he stands just to the left of me, I would say 10 yards, and he's just standing there. I got no camera. I got nothing, right? Yeah. And so, um, and he had no idea was even standing there. So I had this awesome opportunity to get him on video this this whole time, and uh, nope, no camera. Failed. Yeah. So Failed is number two. <laughs> and, and that <laughs> happened a lot to me, and I think a lot of it has to do with my personality. I do yeah. this all the time. I'm always dropping stuff, losing stuff, because I'm so focused on the animal yeah. and, and going after the animal that I will set things down, and I, I just it just happens all the time. So um, in that instance, I put it down with my backpack. I had another opportunity where uh, me and my brother-in-law, his brother and his son were going after a bull. My brother-in-law says, hey, you go after it. Well, you know, I, for some reason, set the backpack down. There I yeah. go again without it. So yeah. it, it happened often. So obvi it's obvious, but you got you got to keep it with you, you know, keep it on you at all times. Yeah. Um, the other thing, too, is just having it readily available. Um, things happen so quick in the field that if yeah. you don't have it right there, ready to go, um, you're going to have problems. You're, you're not going to you're not gonna get, get the footage. Like I said, get it out of your backpack. Um, that's something that sometimes I just didn't, I never took it out. Um, so have it ready, have it readily available. And um, an example of this is I was up on a hillside and I'm calling and nothing's responding. And I'm up there for probably 45 minutes, nothing responds. It's getting, getting close to uh, past, you know, it's getting close to where shooting lights getting a little, uh, it's getting a little dark, you know. Um, I still had, I still had plenty of time to shoot if I needed to. Um, but I start walking off of the hill, and I thought, well, I'm going to do one more bugle. And I bugled, and a bull bugles right below me. I'm not kidding. He must have been 60 yards. Mm -hmm. So here I am. So I hurry. Um, I had my tripod. I had my camera on the tripod. I hurry and set it down, and I'm trying to get it turned on and get the lens cap off. I'm trying to do everything, you know. Yeah. And all of a sudden I hear this crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> and I'm down on my knees, and I look up, and there's the bull standing on the other side of the tree, with his head down, peeking through the trees, looking straight at me, you know, He's and I'm like, like oh, my, here I am, doing? here I am fooling around <laughs> with this camera. And so, um, so I just sat there still like, oh, you know, what do I do? Finally, I'm like, well, and I could see he didn't look like, he looked like he was another five point bull. Yeah. I thought, well, I'm going to see if I can still get this guy on video. So I start to move and, and he takes Ooh. off running, you know. Gone. Um, so yeah, things, it happens quick. You got to, yeah. you got to have it ready. <laughs> well, and I think too, I mean. Yeah, you want it on that really nice camera so you have good footage. But sometimes, you know, a simple GoPro. Where your you cell hit, phone. Oh, yeah, you can just hit record real quick. Yeah. And it's it's going. I think it's a good idea. I mean, if you can have multiple cameras available to you. I mean, if you've got your, you know, your main camera, your digital SLR, whatever it is you're using. Mm -hmm. um but then make sure you got that cell phone camera with you because the cell phone cameras nowadays take incredible yeah. video. There's some downside where maybe they don't they don't um, zoom as far. Yeah, um, and as crisp. Maybe the sound ain't as good, mm -hmm. but they take incredible video. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think that's a great idea. You know, make sure you have that backup yeah. in, in, in case you uh, don't have access to your uh, nice camera at that time. Yep. Um, kind of leading into that, 
one of the things that I had with me that I then started using often after some of those um, mistakes. Um, it's this. Uh, it's a quick disconnect. It mounts to your backpack strap, mm -hmm. and it's made by uh, Peak Design. Um, it's called the Peak Design Capture Camera Clip V3 Solo. And it basically uh, attaches to your backpack strap. Um, you just kind of tighten it down, and it's real secure. It's, it's really good quality. And then you just you just slip your camera into that. And so you got your camera basically hanging off of your backpack strap. So was that annoying? Actually, it wasn't. You know, that was something I tested. I wanted to make sure I could pull my bow back um, yeah. and do the things I needed to. But actually, it wasn't. Um, it, it's really secure. It's really not sticking out any further than your bino harness if you could, oh, okay. if you have a bino harness on you. Um, but it's nice because you just push a button and it slips right out, and then yeah. it slides back right in and it locks. You can have, actually has a little um, on the button. You can twist the button and mm -hmm. it actually locks it, so you can't get it out mm -hmm. until you rotate it back. So that was really nice to have. It may it just quick access yeah. was a nice thing about it. So. Um, let's see what else was, uh, um, man, knowing your camera, I mean, that's another one that sounds pretty obvious, but especially if you're not a, a really experienced, um, person videoing or taking pictures, especially with these DSLRs that have a lot of uh, functionality to them, uh, really got to know your camera. I mean, you got to read up on the manual, watch videos, do the things yeah. that you need to do to learn that camera. Um, and you know, I, I try, I bought it probably a week before the hunt, which was not enough time. And I, and I crammed, I tried to, I was studying constantly when I was in camp, not hunting, I was reading up on it. I felt like I had a pretty good handle on it, mm -hmm. right? Just from book knowledge, but there's so many Physical. things you learn yeah. actually going out in the field. So yeah. I would recommend you buy the camera well in advance. You actually go out into the field with it and practice videoing something. If you're not hunting, yeah. practice. And because there's so many things you're going to learn actually using it that you'll forget. I mean, those manuals are thick, right? So, yeah. yeah, they are. But that that's a big one. Um, there were some, there was one instance, it was actually it was that same, I think, no, no. Yeah, it was that same bowl that was standing behind the tree. Mm -hmm. um, there's an option where you can just, you know, you just push the little record button, small red button. Yep. And, um, but it's so small that sometimes it's hard to tell if you actually hit it. Yeah. And, um, I actually thought I hit it and then, um, I actually didn't. So I, I think what I actually did is I'd hit it multiple times. I so hit it once on recorded. And off, on yeah. On and off, on and off. And, uh, here I thought I was recording this bowl and I wasn't. Well, I went back, look at the manual. One of the options is you can actually use the shutter button, which oh. is big. Yeah. Right. It's really easy to hit. You can use that as a record button. And, hmm. uh, so I've switched to that. Just kind of a lesson of, you know, knowing your camera yeah. and, and helping you out there. So well, makes sense. Oh, verifying camera settings was another thing. Problems I had with like settings was you bump them. Yeah. You know, so you get the camera all set. So you, if you do bump something and now let's say it's in a mode that you don't understand, it's like, yeah. oh, how do, I, how do I get it back into the mode I wanted? Mm -hmm. um, luckily I knew how, but um, there was uh, an instance where another bull I was on, it's funny, some of these were five-point bulls um, that I had seen this year that I wasn't going to shoot. But here I go to start videoing, and I'm trying to focus, you know, automatically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's stuck in manual, and I uh -huh. didn't know it. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And and finally I realized it was it was in manual. Luckily I did know how to, you know, how to switch it back quickly. But I guess the point is make sure those camera settings are set. Yeah. where you want it when you get out in the field. When did I bump it? I don't know. I could have done it right then. Yeah, I mean, you and pull it, that out of your bag, you know, or even yeah. off your thing. You could rub you against it, bump it and yeah. twist the dial. Yeah. So in that kind of instance, um, hopefully you know how to quickly switch it. Um, but there's just times when, you, when you're heading out in the field, just make sure you got the settings where you want them before you get out yeah. there. One, one of the things I do, like when I've recorded things with mine is, like you said, I'll do a practice run. I'll be like, oh, yeah. The lighting's this way. There's so much of this and so much of that. Okay, I'm going to do a quick record just to see what yeah. it looks like. Play it back and I'm like, oh, that looks like trash. I need to change the settings yeah. or, or yep. whatever. And it's it's hard to do that if, I mean, it's if you're right there in the heat of the moment. Yep. 
But I think if you have time to mess around, like you said, and figure it out beforehand, that, hey, this works good at this time of the day versus this time of the day. Yep, and yep. Because lighting changes. I mean, yeah. so there's just so many things can change and, and, and impact the quality or how the, the, the image looks that you want to be able, you want to test it out in that real life scenario if you mm. can ahead of time. It was funny. We went to my daughter's um, uh, cheer competition today. And the rule is you're not supposed to video anyone, any of the other teams, right? Mm -hmm. I guess it's one of those things where they don't want you to video another team and then take it back and then like study Analyze it. And try, it. <laughs> yeah. And then apply it to whatever you're doing. Yeah. Um, but I was videoing another team and the only reason I was doing it was because I wanted to make sure the settings were right. You know, was I zoomed probably, was everything right yeah. before I videoed my daughter and my wife's like, man, you can't be doing that. You're going to get us in trouble. <laughs> You're going to kick us out. <laughs> and I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm like, I'll delete it afterwards if I've got to, but I'm like, I, I want to just make sure it's all set up right. Just yeah. like you said, yeah. you know, do a practice run. So, yep. um, uh, another thing too is just capturing way more footage than you think you need. You know, you get back, you've got all this footage, you come back and you, you try to edit it and edit your video and put it yeah. all together. And suddenly you realize, man, I, I got five minutes. I got five <laughs> minutes. I need, I need more stuff. Um, <clears throat> so I, that's something too, is just make sure you're capturing, um, plenty of video, um, w when you're, when you're out in the field, not just that, not just that moment yeah. of the bull coming in or yeah. whatever animal it is, whatever you're doing. Cause it tells a story. I mean, you're trying to paint a story yeah. and if it's your story is shooting an arrow or whatever and killing something that's, you know, that's only a 30 second video. Yeah. If you know that it's the whole build up to that. Yeah. That tells the story. Yeah, in agree. my opinion, at least. But. No, I agree. So capture, capture a lot more than, than what you necessarily think you need. Um, one of the things too, they call it B roll, which is basically kind of like these, um, it's kind of like the additional video. Mm -hmm. It's not really necessarily part of the story, but it kind of tells part of that story. You know, yeah. you're zooming in on a, a, I don't care, a tree or something oh, or the sunset yeah, or something, yeah. you know, you're, it's that additional stuff you put in there. Um, it's nice to capture plenty of that. Uh, and the nice thing too about B roll is you don't have to capture it right there during the hunt, right? Yeah. You can come back another day and uh, capture a lot of that B-roll stuff if you want to, if you need to get some additional things on your video to make it more interesting. Um, another thing too, boy, just several things here. You know, if you want to film in 4K, which a lot of people want to do these days, get the highest resolution, but, you know, we're talking 8K and whatever else nowadays, but um, 4K is, is, is readily available in most of these cameras. But man, it takes up a lot of memory. Yeah. You know, and um, so you have less amount of memory to utilize. Um, <clears throat> and so you also need more memory cards. So definitely if you're using 4K, you know, stock up on some extra memory cards. I'd have extra memory cards anyways yeah. because they fell. They do. Um, luckily, I've never had one happen, but they can they can fail. They can get damaged, whatever. So mm -hmm. I have extra memory cards. And to be honest, um, I think most people filming their hunts these days are just doing it in 1080p. Yeah. 1080p is high it's quality. Good it's good enough. Good enough for YouTube. Yeah, it's um, it's easier to edit. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't take as much as much space. So that's something to consider. Is is 1080p good enough for you? Um, kind of along those same lines. Spare batteries. Even if you're just going out for a day, um, have spare batteries. Once again, you could have a problem with one of your batteries. Um, who knows? Something could happen. Yeah. Maybe you left the camera on, whatever well, it may be. And they seem to drain really quick if it's cold, too. So yeah. one of the other tips, that I, things that I've done, at least for skiing in the wintertime, is for my spare battery for my GoPro, I keep it inside my coat. Because if it's close to my body, it stays warmer. And then if I have to switch Last it out, longer. it yeah. lasts. If not, I mean, they drain quick. No, oh, that's a good idea. No. Um, so definitely have, have some spare batteries with you. Um, the other thing too, that kind of goes along with that is I always like to have one of those portable, uh, chargers. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, they come in all different sizes, but where they're, they're not handy for when you're mobile, when you're trying to move around, yeah. but if you're sitting in a blind yeah. or you're sitting up in a tree stand, you can plug that, um, charger directly into your camera. Most cameras, you mm -hmm. know, you can plug directly into them. And, and it'll charge or power the camera while you're recording. 
Yeah. So now instead of me sitting on just a battery, a small battery, I've got this large battery pack that I can record for hours yeah. as long as I've got plenty of memory built yeah. in. So that's what I do when I'm, when I'm in a tree stand or in a blind, I will usually plug it into an external battery pack and then I don't have to worry about running out of, uh, out of battery. And you're, you're just, at that point, you're pretty much limited to by the, the, the space, you know, the memory you have mm-hmm. on your camera, your memory card. Um, so that's something that's nice to do. And I even kind of rigged mine up, put some Velcro on it, put some Velcro on my tripod so I could just stick it right on Oh, that's there. really smart. So it, it, it always works out nice. So I would recommend having a um, one of those. Plus, you know, depending on your camera, it can charge your battery that's in your camera for you mm-hmm. um, maybe when you're not using it. You know, you put that battery pack in, in a pocket or in your backpack and run that cord into your camera while it's hanging off your yeah. um, backpack strap. And it's charging your battery. Yeah. So definitely recommend having a, a, a battery backup like that. Um, something that I bought this year, too, for this SLR is what they call a cage. Basically, it's a metal cage that goes around the, the camera body. Aluminum, right? Yeah, this one's aluminum. It, it's painted black. Um, and then it's got all these uh, mounting holes all mm-hmm. around it that you can mount all these sorts of different accessories. I liked it because, one, it protected the camera. I like to set things down, so I'm setting it on the cage versus the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's helped keeping it clean. And then you just have all these places f- to mount things. It's got a hot shoe uh, mount, so mm-hmm. I was able to mount my um, mic to it. Yeah. And then I'm also able to mount my um, the tripod disconnect to that and just whatever else you want. If you want to add a, um, a light to it, yeah, lots of options. And then those holes are usually all around that cage, yeah, so you can everywhere. put it on the right side or the left side or whatnot. So... Um, I, I really liked having a cage and they're not very expensive. Um, I think 20 bucks, 20, 20, 30 bucks, you know, I didn't pay a whole lot for mine. So aluminum and a nice, yeah, and it worked out great. Um, lens hood, um, definitely recommend having a, a a hood that goes over the lens to help block sunlight, sun glare and things Mm. from your lens. I think that that's always nice to have because especially I think as elk hunters, deer hunters or whatever, Maybe you're um, turkey hunting. You're hunting usually when the sun's just yep. coming up or just going down. That is true. And it's so the you're, best time of day. So you got some, you know, those angles and stuff. Yeah. So it's nice to have a, a, a hood to, yep. to, to block the, the sun yep. glare and so forth. I, you know, one of the things that I, I didn't have it on my camera at the time, I think it's nice to have is a strap. Now, a strap to me can cause a lot of problems. Get caught on trees as you're walking. It's noisy. Yeah, noisy. I think there's a lot of downsides to a strap, but the nice thing about a strap that I found, if you're going to hold the SLR camera, your camera in your hands and try to video and prevent from a lot of shaking, Mm -hmm. you can kind of wrap that strap around your arm or pull it away from your neck and it holds it quite steady. And so um, if you run into problems holding steady, a strap's actually a pretty good way to um, keep from moving a lot. So I, 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 didn't have I I probably wouldn't have a strap on mine, no. but let's say you want to do B roll stuff. Let's say the hunt's over, and you've got you've got the hunt video, but now you just want to go get some video of some different things, whatever it may be. This yeah. plant and the sunset and this and that. Um, you could use a tripod pod, or if you want to do some cool effects, um, you can mount the strap to it, and you can kind of like be able to kind of slowly move the camera down and up or to the left and right, mm-hmm. and and makes it very smooth using a. A strap so yeah. something to consider and uh, if you're going to disneyland you know you gotta have a strap <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right <laughs> um of course a microphone so i had a microphone uh, mounted to my camera to the uh to the cage uh just remember it takes up quite a bit of real estate so you were asking me about the bulkiness mm-hmm. of it on on my backpack or on my chest yeah, when that when you got that microphone on there, depending the if mic. yeah, depending if you got it on top or on the side, it it will take up space. I mounted mine to the side. That's where I liked it the best. Yeah. Um, mainly because if you've got the A sixty six hundred, a lot of these cameras now they have the flip up screen in the back, mm-hmm. but most of them will flip to out into the side. Yeah, um, the A sixty six hundred doesn't do that. It flips up. So you can, like, I want to say, like, in a selfie mode, so you can oh, see so you yourself can see while yeah. you're recording. Um, but if you've got your mic or whatever mounted on top, <laughs> you can't see it. It's, it's, it <laughs> it's messes in the it way. Up. Yeah, so that's why I mount my mic to the uh, to the left side. Um, so did you go with a directional mic 
or the stereo one? Mine was directional. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted something directional, kind of block out all the noise around it, and then bulls coming in or whatever it may it's be. It's picking it up. That's a great charge. And especially, I think, if, if we're out there hunting together and we're filming each other and I'm mm-hmm. filming you, I want to I want to hear what you're right. saying, and that's why I want something directional. So. Well, and then it, I think it cuts, like you said, that a lot of the noise. ancillary noise that's around you. Yeah. It doesn't pick it up. You're focused on one specific yeah. thing to get your sound. Yep. Um, let's see. We talked about the B-roll already. Um, you know, just a, a weight, something just to keep in mind when you're out there hunting, if you're going to do this, it just adds a lot of weight. Yeah. You know, I've handed people that camera. They're like, whoa, this thing's yeah. kind of heavy. Well, yeah, by the time you put a cage on it and a mic and, um, yeah, it does add a lot of weight, especially if you're going to have a tripod. So just kind of keep that in mind. And I think that's kind of a no brainer. You know, it's going to add weight. Yeah. So, but you just get a spotting scope too. And yeah. This and water. And yeah. Yep. Everything adds up. So it's just, I think that's one of those, more of those things that, Hey, if you're going to do it, just keep in mind that it's going to add weight and just, yeah. you just, you just got to deal with it. Yeah. So, um, let's see what else. Oh, oh just, <laughs> I think people do this all the time, especially out in this kind of environment where you're out in the dust and the dirt and yeah. whatever else. Yours was really dusty. Yeah, make sure that lens is clean all the yeah. time. Check it all the time. Um, that kind of goes back to we talked about settings. Well, make sure your lens is clean. Um, once again, I think that's kind of it seems pretty obvious, but it's easy to forget. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, where we were hunting this last year, it was very dusty, yeah. a lot of wind, and so it seemed like you were constantly having to clean the lens. If you don't, you're going to have spots and weird things in your in your video. So One of the things I did in some of my older cameras, my original DSLRs, is I got a, oh, a filter on the front that's just a straight-up clear filter. Mm-hmm. Then I screwed on the outside so that the inner lens was still protected. Yep. And then I didn't care so much about the outer one. If I screwed up and scratched it a little bit, I could yeah. just go buy another thing for 15 bucks and throw yeah. it on there. But. It's, I, I, and that's what I have. I bought a, a filter for it. And for kind of the main reason you were saying it's more, for me, it was more about protecting yeah. the main lens. Cause those things aren't anything. cheap. No. I mean, you don't want to <laughs> like screw you said, up you your can lens. Re- you can replace the filter, like you said, for 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, sure. You can get a lot nicer ones that are a lot more expensive. But yeah. If you just want something kind of clear and cheap and, and to protect the lens, you know, you can get something f- um, for a fairly decent price, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So keep that thing clean and, and protect your protect your lens because nobody likes a little frosty look of dirt particles (laughs) on your video when you're (laughs) shooting into the sun yeah (laughs) um with my camera and i think with most cameras i mean if you've got a any kind of they'll have lights on them or especially you've got the um you got the image on the back of it right um Mm -hmm. so you can actually see what the screen that you're looking at um it puts off a lot of light yeah so and it's funny, so even let's just imagine you're in a blind, right? You're it's dark in the blind, sun's going out, starting to get dark. Well now you're glowing inside that blind. Yes. Um same thing if you're out walking around, um, the screen is pointing back at you and it's lighting you up. And so um just be aware of that and on at least on my camera what's nice is it has a sensor on it that if you block that sensor, it'll turn the screen off. Oh, cool. And so especially when I was sitting in a blind um, I would throw something over the top of glove, whatever it was, and it would trigger that sensor and the light would go out. Mm-hmm. So just keep that in mind. Check for that on your camera before yeah. you go out. It's just yeah. something to think about because <laughs> you don't want to be out there glowing. No. Watching a TV <laughs> in there, you know, it's live TV. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these are a lot of these things we're talking about, these things you're, you're going to, you're going to learn eventually, yeah. but hopefully, you know, hearing some of these things, they'll, uh, save your bacon down the road um one of the things i we talked about already is the lens that i bought was a zoom lens the reason or a power zoom lens i like that power zoom lens that sony has it's that uh, 18 to 105 millimeter and it's just quiet that's the one thing i like about that power zoom uh, yeah. and, it, and it has a nice smooth you know zoom in and out mm-hmm. versus if you're doing it by hand Sometimes, you know, you're, you're fast, you're yeah, slow, or, or you have to stop, you know, you rotate a little bit and stop, rotate a little bit and stop. So yeah. it's nice to have that little power one on the side. So keep that in mind. Um, it might be nice to invest in a, in a internal zoom lens. Um, so, and they're quiet. So you wanna, nice. You're speaking of quiet. I mean, I bought a gimbal once for one of my cameras and 
my wife bought it for me for Christmas and I was super excited, you know, and I start filming around the house and I'm like, Oh, this is awesome. Look at the, how smooth this is. And, you know, and then I'm talking and everything. And then I go and play it back and I'm like, what is that noise? <laughs> the gimbal was putting a noise through into the mic. And mm. I'm like, I can't have this. Yeah. I returned it. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. But yep. you wouldn't think, but that gimbal's making noise oh, as, it, yeah. as it's adjusting and yeah. doing its thing. Yeah, it's... and it picks it up. So yeah. you got to be aware of that too. I mean, yeah, you want a smooth camera shot, but mm-hmm. is it worth? Yeah, getting that extra noise because most gimbals out there are powered by a motor of yep. some sort, yep. and they're not just weights hanging off yeah. of it. So you just got to be careful. Yeah, another good reason to do a test. Yeah. Before you get out in the field. Yeah. Because nothing would make you matter, right? You're out in the field. You're recording. You've got this awesome thing, whatever it was, videoed. Mm-hmm. And you get back home and play it back. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And all you hear in the background, <laughs> I, did, I can't even hear myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then you just got to put music to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so that's something just, yeah. Test it all out. Even with these tripods, sometimes they bounce. Yeah. You know, test it out. Make sure it's not making some funky noise you weren't anticipating. Yeah, so. yeah I agree. Uh, the type of tripod that I prefer, there's basically the two out there. You got the pan tilt zoom, right? So you got, it can, it can rotate around. It can rotate up and down. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't mean pan, zoom, I meant pan tilt. So it rotates and it goes up and down. And then um, <clears throat> we have the ball style yep, right tripod yep. i really like the pan tilt because with the ball as soon as you loosen it you know it goes wherever it goes it wherever right and with the pan tilt is kind of nice because you can just loosen one and rotate mm-hmm. and still have the other locked you know yep. um, so that's the style i prefer is the pan tilt versus the ball it's worked out really well for me i also like it um, really well for um when you're glassing yeah you know you can lock it at a certain angle and then just kind of pan across the mountainside and not have it just kind of flopping all over the place. Yeah. So it's a preference thing, but I really liked having that type of a tripod. So I'm not pan tilt zoom. It does not zoom. zoom yeah. <laughs> I don't know any tripods that zoom. <laughs> Unless you chuck it. <laughs> it goes in and out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throw it closer to the animal. Wait uh, a second. <laughs> Stand still. I got to check my tripod. <laughs> Uh, let's see. This thing's not zooming today. Yeah. Oh, you know, just when you look at the cost of the camera equipment, obviously there's a lot more to it than just the camera. Um, for me, you know, you've got, the, you got the camera, you got the lens, you got the filter. Um, most of the lens usually come with a hood. I bought the cage. I got the microphone. I've got a tripod. SD card. SD batteries. cards, batteries. Yeah. External battery, you know, all Spare that stuff. stuff and... Um, whether you have a case the clip that goes on your on your backpack, whatever you have, whatever you plan on buying, I mean, just kind of keep that in mind. There's all these additional things. So yeah, you might go buy a camera for thirteen, fourteen hundred bucks, whatever it may be. Um, well, and I think to start with what you can afford, honestly. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's better just to. I mean, if you use your cell phone, I yep. mean, anything just to document your stuff, just start with something, and then, absolutely, and then you know when you can slowly upgrade i mean you'll you'll know when yep you want to upgrade and i, I know you've had stuff over them in the past and that's why you went went big this year because you're yeah. like okay it's time to upgrade yeah well yeah and I, i'm with you i mean a, a cell phone takes incredible videos we talked about earlier so start with that if that's what you've got start with it mm-hmm. um that's what i've used f- for years when i've been trying to video um, and it's just this year where I knew it was my limited entry hunt, this, you know, I yeah. just visions of, you know, grandiose. Grand, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All these wonderful things that were going to happen. Um, so I, I decided at that point I was going to go invest in a nice camera. I didn't have to invest in a bow. I didn't have to invest in a bunch of other things. I yeah. just I thought, oh, I'm going to use some money and, and go invest in that. So. Well, and obviously you're using it for other things. Cheer competitions. Yes. Cheer competitions. So, um, you know, the, the I guess the, the last thing to mention here is just that it's so hard to video yourself so in the end if you can have a dedicated cameraman 
If you, it, you know, they might mess it up for you, but I guarantee they're they're going to catch more than they're going to mess up for well, you. Well, they they have a different eye too. Yeah, you know, they're not so focused on the animal; they're focused on you. Yep. And portraying the story of you. Yep, exactly. Because most of the time, if you're videoing yourself, you're setting down your your tripod with your camera on it. Mm-hmm. Maybe you've got the camera facing out towards the animal. Maybe you've got a GoPro mounted back towards you. Um, but it's so much better to have someone there yeah. who can just video that whole thing. And if they need to adjust, because yeah. a pretty good chance that when you set that camera down thinking you're going to get this whole thing on video, that bull, like I said, he, he didn't read the script. Nope. So he's going to come in a different direction and a cameraman can turn and get that all on video where if you're tripod sitting on the ground, you're probably stuck with whatever it's doing. Yeah. Um, so absolutely, if you can get someone to be a dedicated camera, and that's the way to go. But, you know, these are a lot of good lessons learned for even if you have a dedicated camera, but especially if you're trying to film your own hunt. Yep, so, I agree. I don't know. These were some things I wanted to share with everybody. I when I was when I got done hunting, I was like, man, I just got all these thoughts about this <laughs> hunt and and what it was like to film, and so I started just jotting things down that I learned and thought, oh, let's let's share it with everyone. So yeah, it was good. Didn't want to be selfish with my knowledge. No, you got to share it. That's <laughs> the only way you improve. I mean, <laughs> obviously, you analyzed everything after the fact too, and you were like, I should have done this, 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 this. Yeah. I mean, that's just the nature of everybody that once you're done with something, you're like, I could have done this so much better this way. And I think this was a lessons learned for not only you, but for everybody that's out there. Yeah. If, if you're in the market for doing self-filming, it's it's definitely yeah. you know, get some good tips. You know, this hunt was awesome. I, I Lots of five-point bulls that I saw early on that I wasn't wanting to shoot Mm -hmm. at the end it's like any hunt you're like I wish I would have shot one of those but if I would have then I never would have known I had I still had like three weeks to go so you kind of want to ride out and and enjoy the hunt Um, but that story that I talked about where I had the camera set up in the blind man that one was just ah that one just eats at me man that was a beauty he he was this awesome looking six by seven bull and when he started bugling and i was cow calling and he's just you could tell he by his bugle he's so frustrated and he's at this i'm almost at the bottom of the valley of this you know this little draw and he's up i want to say maybe he's half a mile maybe further maybe i'd say about half mile three quarters a mile straight up the draw and he's bugling, and he's coming, and he's coming. He's taken forever. I think it took him a half hour at least to finally get to me. And I'm cow calling. He's bugling. And eventually he gets by. I want to say maybe he's like 200 yards off, and I decide, okay, at this point I'm going to stop calling because these elk are so good at pinpointing. I don't know yeah. how they do it, but they, I swear they know exactly where you are standing. Um, so I stopped, and he kept coming, and he's got this frustrated bugle, like, where are you now? Why, are you not, why aren't you talking to mm-hmm. me? And one of the things I did um, when I got there was this blind was kind of already built, but it was built. So there's a big pine tree and the branches are overhanging um, the trunk. And I'm sitting under underneath this tree, sitting back up against the tree trunk. And someone had put branches out in front between me and the, the wallow. Yeah. And, and that, that was fine. But what I was really worried about is I saw a lot of elk tracks coming down off the hill to the wallow. And so I felt exposed to the back of me. Mm-hmm. And so I built up um, using some branches behind me and off to the left a little bit. And so to my detriment, that's, yeah. you'll hear what happens. So here comes this bull and he's starting to head straight towards the wallow. And then all of a sudden he stops. And I want to say he's, he might be a hundred yards out. He stops and he's looking around. I'm thinking, why aren't you coming? Keep coming, keep coming. And then he decides to go back up the hill and he's behind a tree and I've lost sight of him. I don't know where he's at. And all of a sudden he just pops out kind of um, kitty, you know, behind me off to my right. So he's behind me. He's still coming. He hasn't quite gotten to me. And he just pops out. And now I'm in a panic. I'm like, oh my goodness, he's right there. So he's starting now to, like, he's going to start walking behind me. He's about only 40 yards away at this point. So I, I hurry and turn around. And now the only window I've left myself by building up that, <laughs> that, that, uh, those branches behind me is this, like, I want to say like a little eight inch window yeah. or something. And he comes directly behind me above the hit on the hill. 
He's 30 yards. I cow call. He stops. And it's perfect, other than I've built this this stupid, <laughs> stupid wall, <laughs> wall. of branches. <laughs> and I really, if I, I didn't have a shot, if I would have let him keep going, um, where the tree was kind of hanging down, I couldn't shoot any uh, another direction. So I thought I'm just going to give it my best shot. So I had drawn back, I cow called, and I tried to th- thread it through this hole that's right in front of me. And when I released, my arrow almost instantly just dove and it went straight behind him and, and hit almost right to the um, back, his back hoof, yeah. his rear hoof, and hit the dirt and, sh- and you know, ricocheted off. And it was all because, <laughs> all because I the- built that <laughs> stupid <laughs> wall behind me. And um, so, unfortunately, that's what happened. And I wish, you know, thinking back, I mean, we, we always, it's always, like you said, Dave, to, to think back on what mm-hmm. I should have done. Um, I really wish I had gotten out of the blind and then been able to have an, uh, a, a shooting lane above me yeah. and below me. Cause yeah. then I could have shot down towards the, 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 the wallow and I could have shot above me. Um, but I just, in my mind, I was so set on the idea that he was coming to the wallow. Right. That was the plan. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and what, for whatever reason, he decided to stop in the direction of the wallow and then move um, up the hill. I don't know mm-hmm. if he just felt exposed, something he didn't like. Yeah. The wind was in my favor um, the whole time. Um, so that's what Lessons happened. On that learned. Story. Lessons learned. Lessons learned. Yeah. Uh, I was sick over that one. Yeah. When you told me that story, at first you hear like I shot at a ball. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And then you're like, no, I missed. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you missed. I was, like, I was so the... frustrated for you. Uh, I think it's on my broad head is dirt. <laughs> Took a dirt nap <laughs> with the broad head. Uh, so that's funny. Well, there you go. There you have it. All right. Good luck, go, all. Go get out there and uh, film your hunt, and we'd love to hear your uh, experiences, your lessons learned. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully, one of these 22 will uh, <laughs> will help you out. So. I'm sure they will. See you. All right. All right later.